Le nid travaille, le nid travaille. Welcome back or welcome home. My name is Desiree and I'm so so glad to have you here. So I suppose this is the very first official episode in the, how should we call it? Making Every Moment Count series? Possibly. That's what I've been calling it on my Substack, which if you are interested in that, it's like a newsletter. I will have a link to it in my description. I try to send some updates as often as I can, but as you know me, things are usually rather sporadic. So today would be that very first episode of Making Every Moment Count. If you're not quite sure what I'm referring to, you can go and watch my previous YouTube video 
where I just sort of talk about how I want to make every moment count now that I've graduated university and I'm learning to just like get to meet myself properly now that I'm out of academia. I will have it linked up here. Or is it up here? I never know the difference. Somewhere up here and it will also be in the description. But to very quickly sum it up, it's just about sort of documenting these very important moments in my life. So sort of like this weekend, my boyfriend and I are on just a really quick weekend getaway because my niece has a dance competition today. So we came on down yesterday. We got a really nice place to stay in. We did a bunch of activities. And the town that we're in currently is where I used to live uh, many, many years ago. It feels really weird that I can actually say that like over 15 years ago, this is the town I used to live in. So that said, we got to go to some of my favorite spots from back when I lived here. And I do visit it uh, relatively often just because I have a lot of my family who lives around here. And so I'm just documenting the entire thing and just making sure that I have some sort of physical form of my memories. So what have I done this specific weekend to really remain in the moment? I think this is what I'm gonna do every time I make one of these vlogs. I'm gonna make a sort of like debrief about halfway through the vlog to just talk about the specific actions I've taken and making sure that these memories are embedded in my brain forever other than having, you know, the video format of it. Step number one, be present. So yes, obviously it's super important to take pictures and videos because they're great ways to actively track, archive, document trips and memories and all of that. But it's also so important to just be present. So tell yourself like when you get to X place that you'll take your pictures, you'll take your videos, but after a certain mark, you're gonna put your phone away and you're just gonna be present. So document those memories, but make sure that you also document them in your brain folders. That's what my parents used to refer to when I was younger. When I couldn't remember something, they would say like, just close your eyes and try to go back in your brain folders and pull, pull out the right file. So that's the number one thing I did. We went to take a really nice walk yesterday and it was so lovely outside. And so yes, I took my videos, I took my pictures, but after about the halfway point of the walk, I put my phone away and I just, was present in the moment. I listened to the sound of the wind in the trees, the sounds of the waves crashing, just being fully present and touching into all of your senses, which I guess is like the second piece of advice I would give. Touch into all of your senses if you can, because they will heighten the overall experience so much. I think that my like last piece of advice would have to be reflect. Which I know these are all kind of cliche tips and tricks, but they are really important and they do work. So yesterday, as you saw, I have a journal that I did. It's just a notebook that I got uh, back in like October. And I've been doing this for every single day since October where I just open the journal before bed and I do four things. The first one is I write things that I'm grateful for that happened in that specific day. The next thing are things that I did to work towards my goals. And then if there's anything that I could change to have made my day better or my life in general a little bit better. And then the last thing is a tiny to-do list of the three biggest tasks that I have to do for the next day. So I started doing this after I saw a post on Instagram back in September of like, if you do all of these things after 7 p.m., your life will change. And I kept seeing those types of posts here and there, as I'm sure a lot of us do. And I just wanted to try it out to see like if that if it actually did a difference in my day-to-day -day life and so I tried it and I definitely saw some improvements uh, there are some things in those things to do after 7 p.m. that I just realistically could not follow regularly because of the type of job I have so like not being on my phone after 7 p.m. is something I wish I could do all the time and I can do it somewhat regularly but given the fact that I work entirely remotely and most of my coworkers are four hours behind me, uh, 7 p.m. for me is like the middle of the afternoon for them. So sometimes I will need to get on my phone or my computer to just like answer some emails that are really pressing. But like if I can wait until the next day, it usually will wait until the next day. But anyways, 
Those journal entries were one of those things that it said, do this after 7 p.m. and your life will change. And it has genuinely helped a lot to like not only have these journal entries that I can go back on like many years from now and just see how my life was at this specific moment in time, but it's helped a lot to practice more gratitude whenever I'm reflecting on things that happened throughout the day and just really acknowledge how blessed and fortunate I am, truly. So that's kind of like the last piece of advice I would give. Just like really take the time to reflect on your day, see what went well. You can even reflect a bit on what didn't go to plan and how you can change that. I can guarantee it's gonna make a difference. It might not make the biggest difference for you. It all depends on the person, but I do genuinely think it's going to make some difference the stance that you take on negative experiences. And this is coming from someone who still is learning how to like not dwell on how bad something went. So I'm still working on it, but at least I'm working on it. As for what I'm reading, I am reading, uh, what's it called? Is it The Healing Season of Pottery? I think that's what it is. I'll put the book cover here so you know exactly what I'm referring to, but I was lucky enough to get an arc of this book and it's been a title that I've really been looking forward to read for a while now. I'm enjoying it, but it's not exactly what I thought it was going to be. I'm about like 35% in, I think, and I think it's about to redeem itself, but there's just like a few elements in it that don't like fit right for me. So I'm gonna wait until I finish reading it before I actually give like a set opinion on it. So you can look forward to that in some future video. For now, I am enjoying the read. I don't feel the urge to DNF it, but I do have like, I don't know, I don't really know how to describe it. I have like my hesitation moments. I'm really excited to go see my niece dance because this is actually the first time that I get to go to one of her um, competitions because all of the other times I was stuck at home studying. So this time around I can actually go and see her and I know she's so excited about it because I am very much the cool aunt. <laughs> no, but truly I am very close with my niece and I'm just so glad that I can go and see her do what she loves. I also used to go see uh, one of my high school best friends dance competitions and performances pretty regularly back in high school and it's been a while since I went and saw one of those. I'm realizing I really need to buy a new one of these because the mascara is starting to like dry out and it's not, it's not giving, it's not giving, that's it just not giving the results. Oh, also, what I'm currently using, uh, I, this is kind of a funny story. I kind of accidentally bought a lash serum. It wasn't really an accident. It was just more of a moment of, oh, Desiree can't say no. Uh, so I had gone to my hair appointment and they have a few beauty products over there. And I saw the lash serum and I talked about it with my hairdresser and she was like, I've used it and it, you know, it does a decent job. And in case you hadn't noticed, I have very straight eyelashes. Like they will always go downwards. They don't curl unless I use this specific lash curler, which is, this is the, the Shiseido, Shiseido lash curler. And this specific one, the mascara, this is the Lancome Idol waterproof mascara. I've been using this for over a year now. This combo, life-changing. But anyways, I have very straight lashes. They're short and they're kind of thick, hence why it's tricky to curl them. Anyways, <laughs> at that specific salon, uh, they don't put the prices on the products. You have to ask them, like, how much does this cost? And they'll tell you the price. And I was just, like, in such a good mood. And I thought, oh, this lash serum might, you know, change my life. I'll just, I'll take the chance, even if my hairdresser said it's not life-changing. I'll take the chance, I'll buy it. Anyways, she rings me up for my hair appointment. Okay, thank you for that. Then she rings me up for the lash serum. Tell me why this was $80? Like, and I was just like, completely speechless because she was like, okay, and the total is 79 something. And she didn't ask me like 
is that okay? She was just straight up like, oh, well, she said she's gonna buy it, so. And I was just like, okay, debit, please. And I just, I bought it. Anyways, this actually works. It's not a drastic difference, but I can see a difference. And if I can see it, honestly, that's all that matters. So it has definitely helped my lashes get a little bit longer. Uh, it's the Miskoka Beauty Eyelash and Eyebrow Enhancing Serum. I have been using this for close to two weeks now, I think. And it comes with like a little cardstock thing to like actually measure your eyelashes. And when I used that, my eyelashes were at five millimeters. Okay, five. Last time I measured them, when was it? It was a few days ago. Now my lashes are at approximately like seven millimeters, I wanna say. It's very close to the eight millimeter mark. It's improvement and that's all that matters. That is the update on the lash situation. Um, so ends up those 80 bucks were worth it because it's doing something that I personally, I like the result of it. But anywho, that's the update. We're gonna move on with the vlog. We're on to hair. Uh, I actually got a shark thingamajig as a graduation present from my brother and my sister-in-law. So we're gonna test it out for the first time today. I am slightly terrified, uh, so I know that I'm gonna be super focused and I will not say a word, so we're gonna keep on going with the vlog. Hopefully this goes smoothly. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy this little making the best out of every moment episode one situation. Enjoy the rest of the vlog and I will see you in the next one.